Hello, and welcome back to Harriet's Custom Computer Art Plus. I've been away for a while with some health issues, and then my my oldest sister came down with COVID-19, and that was a scare, but thank God she's all right now, and so I'm ready to get back to work. And so what I have here that I'm going to be showing you how to do today is how I made the uh, template for the baseball cap hat box or the paper hat that you can just use as a party hat for children's parties and possibly make them even larger for adult parties if you wanted to. Um, so I was just going to show you how I made the template where I can use it over and over again and just switch up what I want to switch up, change in themes or, or um, do any type of uh, design I want on them. Now it's, I wanted to show you how quickly the learning curve goes on these. This white cap is the first one I made. Every one of these except for the last one have been made from a different template. This template was the first one I used and you can see it has kind of like the, the jagged edges. Uh, it was a free template online I wouldn't really waste my time with that one, but it at least taught me how to work on putting the hats together. So that was my first attempt ever at making one of these hats. Then the very next, next night, I found this template, which was simpler, and uh, the hat came out perfect. And then after that, I wanted to try the box template. And that was when I was doing the LOL. Then I decided that I wanted to add my own papers to it because I've only ever seen them solid with um, stickers added. And I wanted to see how it would look, you know, adding your own design. So I made it uh, the template where I could easily swap out the panels or put any kind of decoration or design that I wanted on them. And then the last one, this is the fourth attempt so you see how quickly you progress it's it's it you really get it down pretty quickly um and this one is actually an order that i got after uh someone saw the lol one in one of my uh one of the groups that i'm a part of so, but this one i'm going i once again printed my own papers for this one um, but I'll show you I'm going to redo the top because when if I'm doing solids like this um, I think it's better if you use the full color uh, cardstock that you can get from Michaels I want to get solid black because I don't like these white um, lines going through the hat on the ones like this one that are multicolor you can get away with uh printing your own paper but for this one at least the top the base i can keep but the top i need to um i'm just going to buy some solid paper because i want the best going out to uh, my customers so i'm going to show you today i'm going to show you how to make both all through well this one we can forget that one because it was a crappy template to begin with um as you can see it was almost impossible to not have these holes if you didn't have the holes it made a fold but this one is uh, the first one i'm going to start with and this is one you can use as a party favor and the way that i'm going to set it up where i can change out the design whenever i want it's the same way i did with i actually did on the AL, on the uh, lol doll so i'm going to show you this one first because this one is really the easiest to make the this one is a little bit more of a learning curve but as you can see after making this one it was much easier for me to get this one right and then by the time i got to this one I, I had learned a, a technique that helped me get through it pretty quickly which I'll be showing you in the next video because I don't want this one to be too long so let's start with the blue hat and the blue hat that template and I actually printed the, this paper blue um, instead of putting a design on it I just wanted to do something quickly so I could see if I could make it this is the templates for the blue hat and how I set it up and as you can see it comes from a space called designer uh, DIY designer and you can see right here this is uh, a4 paper snapback DIY designer 
this is the for the blue baseball hat but that's how you can look it up on the internet and you just google it is totally free and probably at this place you'll find a lot of things you might want to make but I'll show you how I um, made the blue hat or design the blue hat show you how to make it into a, a reusable template so I just copy and, and paste it I'm into picture it by right clicking on the page in the uh, on images in Google search once I went to images and I found this I just right click on it hit copy picture and then open up Microsoft picture it in a page and put paste picture what I did with each one was I found all the duplicate pieces because I want to make as few pieces as possible unless I'm going to put a different design on each panel like I did with the um, LOL doll, doll but on this one they had three panels that were exactly alike this one and the ones beneath it so I knew immediately I could delete two of these and just work with one like I said if you decide to put a different design on each panel like you're making a Fortnite hat for a birthday party then just make two copies of the same one and then put whatever characters you want but I'm gonna set it up just to make it just a solid solid pattern um, so now I'm down to just five sections and that's the fifth section I'm gonna go ahead and minimize this so I have more room on my page actually it's six sections because you make two uh, two cutouts of the lip of the hat so that uh, it will give it the firmness and also this is the the main lip that attaches to the hat and these two just both will be glued on this area both of these so let's go ahead and get started now I've gotten rid of all the duplicate pieces and I'm going to concentrate on making this into a reusable template. So the first thing you want to do, you want to look for the widest, the, the, pic, the picture or the page that has the widest section. And I'm going to, if you put, if you, if I put this up next to those, I can see that the, the brim is wider than all the rest of these pieces on their own so this is going to be my front sheet and I'm going to resize according to this sheet so I'm going to bring it all the way to the top and now I'm just going to put all the other pieces in a stack because I want to resize them all at the same time so I'm just sliding them all over and I'm going to stack them all And while I'm at it, I'll pull this, the picture, completed picture all the way to the bottom so it won't be in my way. So now I'm just going to go to the top corner, drag down, group all of those for now. I'm going to put this up to the edge because I want this to fill up as much of the page as I can. Zoom out a little bit. Because I don't want any of these lines cut off. So this should, this should work right here. move it up a little bit because I just want the the portion of the template on the page yeah that that will work so now I'm going to zoom in all the way because I want to be able to click on these fine lines I'm going to go to cut out in picture cut out of picture by color selection and I'm going to say click on all similar areas because I want all these lines out at the same time without having to go and click on each one. So I'm going to find the thickest portion that I can make sure that I'm not clicking on the wrong portion, the white portion. I'm going to click on just the black. And as you can see, it turns them all purple. I'm going to scroll out so that I can make sure that I do have all of those lines included make sure that you have the entire template that none of the lines are outside of your edge and I'm gonna go ahead and hit next 
and done. And now I'll show you that first layer here is just the lines from the hat. As you can see, it's only the line. And I'm going to hit back arrow and put it back where it was. This time we're going to do it one more time. And you'll only have to do this the first time you're using a template. I'm going to go back to cut out and picture. I'll zoom out this time. I'm going to go to cut out and picture. Cut out of picture by color selection. This time I'm going I'm not going to use all similar because these are all in separate sections and I this is white as well so it picked that up and I'm just going to click in side of the lines. I'm going to hit next and done. Now I have the inside which will be what you'll be changing to your different patterns. I'm going to go ahead and hit back arrow. So now my first two layers are the lines which I'm going to bring the lines back up to the top layer. So I have the lines and I'll show you that Oops, I'll show you that by clicking. So now I have the line portion. That's the first layer. And then on the second layer is the solid portion of the brim and the top button. Okay, so now I have all of my pieces cut out. You can see that there's no white edge because you can see that the the rest of the pieces are behind so now at this point you would save this file save it as hat uh, wearable hat master or whatever you want to call it so this one I'm just going to change it to a different pattern so I have an order for Alice in Wonderland party supplies coming up and I found this on the internet just by, of course, Googling high res Alice in Wonderland. And let's say I wanted to make baseball caps with this print. And so I just want to use that to show you how easy it will be to um, design your hat with it. I have all of the templates here and I want to change this to an Alice in Wonderland pattern. So I'm going to first, everything, every template for this hat, I'm going to make it using this same page. So I'm going to go to cut out and picture, add a colored shape. I'm going to change it to white, white square. And I'm going to stretch it so that it's covering up the whole page. And then I'm going to go to the second layer on the right, and I'm going to drag it up to the top. And this is how I do all of my templates on the same page but then I save them as separate pages and this is how you make sure that you're not messing up the shape of any piece so that when you go to put it all together it won't match so we're keeping everything on the same page so now I'm just gonna bring this down a bit just just so that I have it kind of in the middle of the page and making sure everything all the lines are showing I'm gonna ungroup it now the first the first layer was the lines so we're not going to do anything to that page we're going to leave that page as it is and it doesn't matter that as you can see this part is still there because once I save this as a JPEG I'm going to go ahead and hit my back arrow once I save it as a JPEG all it's all that's going to be showing is this area anyway so it doesn't matter that it's up there don't worry about taking off the extra letters and things that were there so now I want to click on the second layer because now that I've ungrouped it the first two layers are my outline and my inside sections of the brim of the hat so I'm going to go to cut out and picture this time we're going to do fill cutout or picture which is the second choice on the bottom and I'm going to click on the apple and I'm just going to drag up Alice in Wonderland now as you can see it instantly fills that pattern you can still see all your fold and cut lines and you're just going to move this around until you like the pattern make sure that you're not moving it so far that it takes some of the picture 
or some of the design out from your uh, template. So I'm going to move this around until I'm getting pretty good pictures of everything so nothing looks too cut off. And, and this is your own, you know, your own uh, eye as to how, how you want it. And I'm just going to move it until it looks like I have enough characters that look like they're showing enough making sure that I'm gonna have all my lines filled in if you need to make it a little bigger to fit it in you can do that only grabbing and stretching by any corner you never if you want to keep a picture in perform in uh, in correct proportion you always only pull from the corners move move make it smaller from the corners and larger from the corners otherwise you're gonna have like weird shaped characters and it's gonna look elongated and it just it just takes away from the design so I'm gonna I'm okay with this one well her leg is showing over there I can move it over a little bit if I want to and since it this is the main brim that will be showing underneath uh, I can move that over this way a little bit and I'm okay with that so I'm gonna go ahead and hit done and now I have my my button is not looking too good. I can always go and swap that out later uh, because that's just showing the bottom of his foot. So I would probably redo just this little section if I wanted to. But I'm okay with this for now. So now this is my first piece. I'm going to save this now as a JPEG. So I'm going to go ahead and do that file save as. I'm going to change this to a JPEG by clicking on this arrow, scrolling down until I get to JPEG. It changes it to JPEG. I'm going to give it a new name and I'm going to say BB, BBC1 Brim or whatever you want to call it. You, the, each one of these you want to give them a separate name because these are going to be what you're actually going to print out to make your hats with so while that's saving once it's saved now that it's saved and as you can see I didn't change the name here and so that you won't mess up your master it's best that you save a copy remember I already saved a copy of it but just to make sure that I don't mess this one up I'm gonna go ahead and save a new copy and I'm gonna save this in picture format as well so I'm gonna to go to file save as I'm gonna leave it in picture format and I'll just call this uh, I'll put, just put a W in front so now I'll make sure that I'm not messing up my master and I'm going to go ahead and hit save. And now I can do anything I want to this page because now that I already have this page, the first, uh, the cap saved, I'm going to just delete this because I don't need it anymore. And I can delete this pattern, this portion of it because I don't need it anymore either so now I'm gonna once again go to the first one under the white sheet and drag it up one layer to the top and notice I'm not resizing these I'm not resizing the template because you never want to resize it because it will mess up everything it won't fit in with the rest of the pieces and I'm gonna do the same thing I'm gonna click on it ungroup it I'm gonna go to cut out and picture cut out of picture with the cookie cutter shape and I'm going to show you something now that I have this next piece it's the design is sideways so to make sure that I'm keeping the Alice in Wonderland picture sideways I'm going to switch to it and I'm going to make a copy of it by going to cut out in picture cut out of picture with the cookie cutter shape and I'm going to put this around the edge all the way around my picture I'm going to hit next and now I'm going to make sure that there's a check mark in this box 
because this time I want to move this to its own picture. So I have a check mark here. I'm going to hit done and it's going to make a copy of it. This is my copy. Now this copy, I'm going to turn it on its side. So I'm going to go to size and position, rotate, and then I'm going to click it so that it's in the same direction as the piece that I want to add it to. So I'm going to go back to my template. And now when I have a piece that's turned sideways, which I have a couple of them, I will drag this one up instead of the first one. So I'm going to go to cut out and picture. Make sure I'm on the right layer first, which is the second layer. That's the solid white layer. I'm going to go to cut out and picture, fill cut out or picture with the picture. And then I'm going to drag up this new copy of the picture I just made. And now I have my pattern still going the way I want it to go. I still have my fold lines here so I can see them. Uh, or as you would say, your score lines. So you'd know where to fold it. And I can resize this in or out once again if I want to change it up a little bit and it'll still go together but try not to make it stretch it out too much because you still want it, the whole hat to look cohesive so I didn't I didn't make that big of a of an adjustment I pulled out the first one a little bit so I pulled out a little bit on this one but with patterns like this as long as you don't you know make it too much larger than the previous one you should be fine and I'm going to hit done. And now that piece is done. I'm going to go once again to file, save as, change it to a JPEG. I'm going to click on this one that I already made just so that I can, I don't have to retype the whole name. And I'm going to delete the part that says brim and change it to side one or s1 whatever makes it easier for you to keep track of them and I'll, I'll save that one make sure you save it as a jpeg because like i said these are the ones that you're going to actually print out or take into cricut and cut out and i'm going to do the same thing for this one I'm going to go to cut out and picture, fill cut out our picture with the picture, and then I'm going to drag that new one we made up from the bottom to fill in this one. I'm going to click done. And now I'm going to save this as my next page. And we're going to do this for each of the pieces on this page. I'll finish those up and then I'll be back to show you how they all look now we're moving on to the lol doll hat and this these are all the pieces of the lol doll hat all of these pieces are the same except this one is different so i'm just going to pull out the ones that are different. So I'm going to go to cut out and picture, cut out of picture by color selection, and I'm just going to pull out the whole thing first. Hit next and done. You need um, six of those. So you see the other three down here, but I just pull out one and then I make six copies of it. And next I'm going to go to cut out and picture, cut out of picture by color selection, and I'm going to click on this one. It takes everything, including the lines, the score lines. I'm going to click Next and Done. And I know that I need five of these and then one of these with the cutout. So I'll move out the ones that I'm cutting out down here. So you'll see you don't have to go through the trouble of cutting out every single piece, just one of every piece. And now I'm going to get this piece. So I'm going to cut out in pictures cut out of picture by color selection and I'm going to draw that one out hit next done 
move it down. I need one of these. Cut out a picture. Cut out of picture by color selection. Next, done. Move it down. Because these are going to be the pieces we're going to resize. I need to get my little top piece. So cut out in picture. Cut out of picture by color selection. Grab it. Next, done. Move it down. Make sure you don't stretch that one because it's a little small. Then I need these two pieces and I will be done. I'm going to just stack all of these up inside of here. And basically I'm just putting it together pretty much as you can see and just making sure that I have every piece. I'm going to group these, close it, make a brand new page, new go to file, new, portrait, done. And now I'm going to click on this picture. It brings up a menu here that you will only see in the early, my early earliest tutorials when I had a camera on my screen. Now it's all done in the computer and it doesn't show this little menu here. But once you click on anything in this tray, it brings up a a little larger sample of what this is and then I'm going to click on that grouping that I put here and drag it into my new page. One to ten I'm going to make this as large as I can get it on the page without losing any part of it. Okay, so now I have all the pieces that I need for the cap hat box, and I'm just going to resize these all together. I unlocked them, but I'm just clicking to make sure, uh, click and drag from the top left down to the bottom to make sure I have all of them. You could see all the quadrant markers, and I'm just going to resize these all at the same time making sure they're filling up the page just about but have enough left over where I'm not losing any of my edges. I'm going to do the same thing now that I have them sized correctly. I'm just going to do this one piece for you so you'll know how it goes. So I'm going to drag that piece is already on top. I'm going to go to cut out and picture, add a colored shape. This is where we make the white shape. Fill up the entire page. And then I'm going to drag up the piece I want to work with, which is this one. And I'm going to go to cut out in picture, cut out of picture by color selection. I'm going to pull out this whole thing first. So I have the whole color that I need. The, to, this will be what I'm changing the, the print of. I'm going to hit next and done. Now I'm going to zoom in. Go to cut out in picture, cut out of picture by color selection to draw out your score lines or your the lines that you want to fill in or draw in with your marker. And I'm going to change it this time to one so I'm just getting the black. And I just clicked in it and dragged down a little bit. You can also do the all similar on this one. Click in, drag down, and it should grab all three of them. If you see any part left out, just drag that part. And now we have our score lines. And then to add the color, all you do is click on the piece you want to change, like with the blue hat, the original blue hat that I was showing you. Go to cut out and picture, add a fill, cut out a picture with the picture, and drag up the color. Hit done. And since this is still showing a little blue, all I would do is click on that, paint and color effects, black and white, click make black and white, it will make black and white, or you could just go in and make them a solid black by clicking on paint and color effects, fill with a solid color, click all the way over in the black, and it makes it black. And I believe that's what I did for the, for the hat. Now to show you how I added the custom pieces of the doll. 
I'm going to go ahead and take this back a layer like I did in the Alice in Wonderland hat and also drag this one back and then I'll bring I'm going to bring two of those sections to the top because the side sections this section is just solid pink so I don't need it now and what I did was I put two of these on a page turned one this way turn the other one that way and I had the teeth kind of close to each other so when I took it into Cricut to cut it out um, I could get it I could get it um, all on one page so I had these kind of close together but I'm going to move them apart so that they won't pull out the color of both at the same time I'm going to go to cut out in picture cut out of picture by color selection and I'm going to click in that uh, blue area and it pulls all that out. We're going to do these separate. So I'm going to click Next and Done. Then I'm going to click on this one. Go to Cut Out in Picture. Cut Out of Picture by Color Selection. It's on 2. And I'm going to click again. Hit Next and Done. So I want to cut out these... Um, fold lines or the score lines so I'm going to go to cut out and picture cut out of picture by color selection and this time I'm going to drop it down to one because I don't want it to pick up the blue and I'm going to once again tell it all similar areas and I'm going to click in the line just so that I get that line you see it turns pink or purple I'm going to hit next and done now I can start decorating these so what I did was I clicked on the first one just the singles and I went to cut out in picture fill cut out a picture with the picture and I drug up my background now since this is a solid solid color I didn't have to do the uh, turning the picture and like I did with the Alice in Wonderland I just needed to put the pink in each one so I'm just clicking in each one of those layers and I'm gonna go once again to cut out in picture fill cut out with the picture click on the apple and drag up your picture from the bottom hit done and then I just added the LOL turned it around resized it I think I had it a little at an angle and I put this above the little cutout and then I just added my doll drug her up from my tray turned her around resized her on the pink panels I had two I believe so I will do that here as well just drag up two characters and put them on You can add shadows if you want to give them some depth. So I'm just clicking on the first character and then holding control, the control key, click on the second character, choose shadow. And since these are turned sideways, you'll just have to remember whichever way you shade them. And I shaded them, I sh put the shade on or the shadow um, down and to the left on this one so just remember to do the same thing on the other one grab a couple of dolls and put them on this one resize them as large as you want and this is the way you would do it if you want a different doll or different dolls on every panel or a different design on each panel then you would need to do one of these for each and I know that I need five of these so this would be the one that I would just put five different designs on I would put two of just this one on the page like we did with these two but I only need one of these so I would just put two of these on the page and just keep changing it out with new characters file save as JPEG give it a, a, a new name 
and then I would have all my panels done like that. So I'm going to go ahead and give these two ladies a shadow by using the control key and then go into special effects shadow. I'm going to click soft and then I'm going to, I had it going on the other one down and to the left. So I'm just going to mimic that on these. Make sure that I have about the same thickness of shadow and done. Drag up my LOL. And on some of them I had it going straight across, I think. So that's how you do the one with the LOL dolls. Or, of course, you could do this with any, any design you want. I hope this has been helpful to you. In the next video, I will be showing you how to assemble them. These are, it will be two different uh, assemblies, the wearable hat and the, and the uh, hat box. Thank you again for stopping by Harriet's Custom Computer Art Plus. I'll see you next time.